Hello Patreons. Hope you've had a good week. I am over my cold, which is good, but Canberra is not over. It's cold, it's freezing, it's already rained on me twice today. I got home, I just, I did all the shopping and it's 3 p.m. and you know what I did? I put my pajamas on. So this video is coming to you via my pajamas. Should I show you my pajamas? They're, they're very floral, floral pajamas. Uh, now, this week, a reader of the blog wrote to me and asked me about mind mapping software. And uh, you know what? I'm a fan of the old pen and paper, as you well know. But I thought to myself, yeah, I haven't sort of really explored the mind mapping software stuff for a while. So I put a shout out on Twitter and people came back with really great suggestions. So I will do a blog post of different mind mapping software that are available. But one person, I think it was Ali, in Edinburgh, uh, reminded me of Scapple, which is brought to you by the geniuses who wrote Scrivener. And if you don't use Scrivener, that's a video for another time. Uh, and it's a little really cheap $22 piece of software that just is really fun to use. So I thought I'd use it to show you how to map out an argument uh, without pen, or pencil and paper and have a little bit of fun with it. So I hope you like it. So this is the Scapple interface. It's really just a blank page, extremely elegant, uh, just very easy to use. It's like an infinitely extendable um, blank page, if you like. So first of all, I'm just gonna start off with the key question that I'm gonna argue with myself today. Um, and the argument I'm gonna have with myself is, should the PhD curriculum change. A live debate in many areas of the world. PhD originally was designed for training academics. Most people don't stay in academia. Therefore, should we change the degree itself? So using Peter Elbow's technique, I can argue the pros and cons. And Peter Elbow just calls this the believing game and the doubting game. So over here, I'm going to believe. Yes, it's a good idea to change it. Over here, I'm going to doubt. No, let's not change a thing. Uh, so then I just really start to map out arguments for and against, and I'm going to use what's called the Beardsley-Freeman argument mapping technique, which is really just a, a technique to, designed to show the causal chains in an argument. So one reason why we might want to change the PhD curriculum is employers seem to want it. So employers want a big range of technical and communication skills that are not conventionally offered in PhD programs. So that's what our research on employability has shown very clearly. Um, so I can connect this to the yes so that I know those two ideas are connected just simply by dragging and dropping and I create a connected note there. And I can connect this one to here if I want and this one to here. Okay, so we can start to, to trace connections between things. Um, but I really want to show that that particular point leads to this particular answer. So in this case, I'm going to highlight this one, hold down shift, highlight this one and connect them with an arrow. All right, so why should we do what employers want? I mean, we're universities, can't we just teach whatever we like? Isn't it knowledge for the sake of knowledge? Uh, well, one reason why you might want to do employ what employers want is because the taxpayers are paying for it. So I might write up here, taxpayers are funding Australian PhDs. Um, and I could connect the taxpayers funding it to giving employers what they want. Now, that doesn't actually logically follow as an argument. I think we need something in between there. So if we say, for instance, taxpayers are funding Australian PhD, and we could say then here, just by double changing, double clicking inside that link, taxpayers expect PhD graduates to work when they complete to pay back this investment. Okay. So I can grab that, grab that, 
And we can start to then indicate that this leads to this leads to this. So if I say link those two things, connect with an arrow, link those two things, connect with an arrow. So later on, if I come back to write this, I could then just uh, write my paragraph following that logic. Another reason for yes is it keeps keeps a new competitive by offering a distinctive distinctive program. Dyslexia says no. Again, I can just drag and drop that onto the yes, or I can connect the two with an arrow, like so. Right. Over here, let's think of some reasons why you might say no. Well, you might say that the technical and communication skills are best learned on the job. Okay, so you just, you just learn them as you need them. And why should we invest all that extra effort? So drag and drop that one onto there. Or I could turn this and this into an arrow. <clears throat> okay, so that might be one argument against it. Another argument might be, say, the future is really uncertain. Um, how do we know? Techniques taught now will stay relevant. We can't really. So let's connect that one to the no argument as well. And um, over here we could simply say it costs too much. That's always a good argument inside a bureaucracy, isn't it? Okay, turn that into an arrow. Turn that one into an arrow. And your for and against arguments are starting to shape up now. So, of course, within a thesis or within a position paper, as this will be, you need to have much more sophisticated interaction between the for and against. So I might decide in this paper that I'm, I'm arguing the pro case. I've got to anticipate the arguments of the no case. And I've got to anticipate and counter those arguments. So this is one of the really good reasons why you would bother doing Peter Elbow's doubting and believing game, because it enables you to anticipate the arguments and to make an argument against it. So, for instance, um, the future is really uncertain um, and we want to keep a new competitive. We could write something in the middle here like um, universities are well placed to anticipate needs because they are on the forefront of knowledge production. Okay, so I would put that over here and I would just connect that to there and I would also connect it to there. And so although I'm arguing, let me just zoom it out a bit. Ah, still learning how to move around in here and not get lost. Although I might be arguing these kind of chains, these are the counter arguments that I might want to use. So I might want to highlight what are my arguments and what are my counter arguments? What are my questions? What are my positions? Okay, so Scaffold gives you an, a, an inspector over here and you can give things different colors. So this could be my overall topic. These two could be my positions, give them brown. And all of these are arguments. And then this one here is a counter argument. Okay, so when you come back to it later on and you want to pick up your arguments and the counter arguments, they're pretty easy to find just by, by looking at the diagram. So I hope that's an interesting sort of start of how to use scaffold. Maybe I'll do a few more videos where I can demonstrate this argument technique 
in a bit more of a sophisticated way. Um, but anyway, if you've got any questions, of course, just uh, drop me a line. Uh, other pieces of software, obviously this one runs on the Mac. I don't actually know an equivalent for the, P, um, for the PC, but I'd be really interested in if anyone wants to write in and let me know if they've got something similar. So I hope to see you all in two weeks.